Sources on both sides claim that the heaviest fighting ever seen in Bahmut is now taking place in and around this train station. There is a massive fog of war in this area. Elite assault squads from both sides attack and counterattack each other every hour. Welcome my friends and today marks my 12th video on the epic battle of Bahmut. Now before we take a look at the map, check out this interview from a few days ago by General Krivonos of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. What did I tell you? Isn't it a coincidence that I posted a video on the 11th of February titled Zelensky, have pity on your man. It's time to pull out. Look at the map behind me. Save your army. It's not too late to let them retreat in good order. Thousands of proud Ukrainian soldiers are waiting for your command. Enough said. Two months after I made this video, my theory was confirmed by a general of the armed forces of Ukraine. Welcome to History Legends and here are the latest news of the Russo-Ukrainian war. Remember that if you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And as you know, just like with many other commentators, some of my Ukraine videos have been targeted with limited or no ads. So make sure to check out my Patreon or PayPal to keep the show running. Thank you to everyone that has already helped and welcome to the headquarters. Truth is, in these first days of the month of April, fighting conditions were at their worst. In this video from the 5th of April, the snow is melting, but is now turning into a mix of mud and cold water that is filling up the trenches. Here's another video from the perspective of Ukrainian medics coming to pick up a wounded soldier. <laughs> All right, boys, what is happening in Bahmut? So this was the front line on the 12th of March, so roughly a month ago. And this is the front line now. As you can see, the situation has drastically evolved in favor of Russian forces. So this is what we'll take a look at today. As the urban battle was raging, the Ukrainians sent a lot of reinforcements to hold the flanks of the Bahmut garrison in order to prevent an encirclement. Like these fighters of the Georgian Legion, we see them fire using machine guns and a variety of small arms, as well as firing an 84 unguided, man-portable, disposable anti-tank weapon. In mid-March, it seems that Wagner had assembled two large strike formations meant to break through Ukrainian lines using Soviet deep battle doctrine, but on a tactical level, on a smaller scale. Essentially, attack all along the front with huge reserves ready at the rear. The moment one enemy position is giving in, reserve units concentrate towards this Schwerpunkt to breach the first line of defense and then exploit the entire network of enemy defenses, which is significantly different from the typical encirclement maneuver that we talked a lot about. And using this deep battle doctrine, the musicians broke through in the center of this Ukrainian line of defense and fully controlled the southern district of Bakhmut by the 24th of March. Meanwhile, they also started storming the Azam factory in the north. Then the orchestra shifted the direction of attack of its assault squads. This time they attacked right across the river, coupled with another strike coming from the south, which gave them control over the strategic city center. At this point, the Russians had breached the strongest Ukrainian line of defense, meaning that even if Ukrainian troops managed to withdraw, the speed of the breakthrough meant that every new line of defense would be weaker than the previous one. This is when more and more Wagnerians were sent in as reinforcements right into the furnace. By April 1st, the Azam industrial area was under Russian control, which allowed them to start a pincer movement that could trap the Ukrainian forces east of the railway. And on April 2nd, 2023, at 11 p.m., the head of the Wagner PMC, Evgeny Prigozhin, hoisted the Russian flag on the city administration building in Bahmut. Notice how he did so in complete darkness, not to attract any attention on himself. Because Ukrainians must be now on high alert after his multiple PR stunts right at the front. This is the flag that Prigozhin planted. It is dedicated to fallen war reporter Vladin Tatarsky. Eternal memory from all Russia. 
also noticed that he did not use the Wagner flag, but the flag of Russia, which we could interpret in multiple ways. First of all, because there are rumors that Wagner units are not the only ones fighting in Bakhmut and that they were heavily supported by VDV paratroopers and even Russian marines. Personally, I think all the rumors of all the beef, all the conflict between Prigozhin and the Russian Ministry of Defense to be either highly exaggerated or completely fake. Because Prigozhin himself said the following, the decision to conduct the Bakhmut operation, the so-called Bakhmut meat grinder, was made by the commanders of the Wagner PMC. All right, which, by the way, coincides with what this Ukraine general said. But then Prigozhin continues. Sergei Sorovikin was directly involved in its development and implementation at the time when he led the group. And therefore, I would attribute a huge number of decisions that were made to his account. So in a way, I think that all these PR stunts pulled by Prigozhin and the Wagner PMC, all this attention they drew to themselves was perhaps planned. Prigozhin was riding straight into the battle with the Wagner flag in his hands which in turn drew the attention of the entire world media towards Bakhmut, which in turn forced the Ukraine army to send more and more reserves because the entire planet would look at the resulting battle. And this is where the Ukraine sort of fell in the trap. It's a trap! Anyway, that's my theory. Let me know in the comment section what you think about it. Back to the battle. This Wagnerian grouping in the center arrived in wedge formation and kept breaking through from one position to another which forced the Ukrainian troops to abandon their last hold on the Bakhmutka River and essentially give up this entire sector. Now a lot of the success is attributed to a good division of tasks in Wagnerian assault units, namely the 101st self-propelled shovel division. One fighter called Yaroslav explained, someone only digs, someone brings ammunition, someone shoots and separately storms. Meanwhile, a Ukraine soldier commented, as soon as Russian troops move forward, people with shovels come in from behind and dig trenches and bunkers, while others carry ammunition and hide it in holes. This is essentially Soviet infantry World War II tactics. This poor understanding of enemy tactics led to countless misleading articles and ridiculous memes about the Russian army sending its troops into battle with shovels. Now in total disarray, by the 6th of April, Ukrainian defenders lost more and more ground, and by the 9th, the Ukrainians only held a small breachhead over the railway line centered on the Bakhmut Central train station. Sources on both sides claim that the heaviest fighting ever seen in Bakhmut is now taking place in and around this train station. There is a massive fog of war in this area. Elite assault squads from both sides attack and counterattack each other every hour. There's also a lot of conflicting reports about this sector of the avant-garde stadium. There seems to be a lot of back and forth around the sector. According to the latest news, Soryak Maps declares that this area is under Russian control. Although Ukrainians have counterattacked and have reached the border of the stadium, there are also many reports of Ukrainians sending in a lot of reinforcements into Bakhmut, probably to give the guys at the rear some more time to establish new defensive positions. Now let's map out Ukrainian positions. There's this Ukrainian defensive line that runs across this railway, which will offer proper firing positions for the defenders. And since this line is centered on the train station, there's a lot of fighting going on there. Ukrainians have also fortified this train depot for the north. There are also these positions in the northern part of the city, as well as multiple strongholds in the south near this MiG-17 monument. Lastly, the bulk of Ukrainian defenses are built around this area, filled with high-rise buildings. This is sort of their base, where soldiers can rest and pack up on food and ammo. And this is also where they positioned a lot of their local reserves ready to intervene anywhere in the city. Here you can see how the Russians bombarded one of the buildings. The debris fell and damaged these two Ukrainian tanks that were parked there. To give you an idea of the density of Ukrainian troops in this sector, one block away from the tanks, this is all the places where Ukrainian soldiers were geolocated recording videos. All these commie blocks really turn this area almost into a fortress. These things can sustain significant damage 
and there are so many firing positions and hideouts for the defenders that each block would be extremely complicated and costly to storm. For the OGs it's like the map Pripyat from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. As you can imagine, a frontal assault against these positions would mean a lot of casualties for Russia. Notice the intensity of this Russian artillery barrage before launching assault squads to storm Ukrainian positions. So we can assume that they will try to bypass this stronghold. To this effect, it seems that Wagner PMC has already shifted its assault squads once more specifically on both flanks. In the north, while benefiting from this high ground position here, the musicians are squeezing their way through this sector called the alleyway. If they break through, they could push along this residential sector and aim to capture this road. Even worse! It would cut this one going through Hromove, but also this little country road as well. Oh man, this is bad. Now sadly, this road going from Bahmut to Hromove up until Chasivyar has been nicknamed the Highway of Death. You can see what remains of a Ukraine column driving through this road. I don't know exactly what happened, but I counted 14 to 16 burnt and abandoned vehicles. We can see one tank, one BTR-4 here, another IFV there, two Humvees, and the rest seem to be civilian trucks. But I don't think it all happened at once, because the BTR-4 was already marked as destroyed in this video dating back from March 15th, and in this video from April 4th, which seems to be in the same place, we can see there's already more destroyed vehicles. So I think what happened is that there was this column of six, seven vehicles, a mix of civilian trucks and Humvees that cut through this area at night to leave Bahmut. Sadly, this is where they got spotted and ambushed. Meanwhile, in the southern districts of Bahmut, very similar strategy as in the north, the Wagnerian command faces multiple options. Since this area is highly sensitive to the Ukrainians, the orchestra could push north like this and essentially flank Ukraine positions and force them to withdraw from the train station and out of this breachhead. But if they really want to hurt the Ukrainian line of defense in the Bahmut sector, they could storm this area here near the famous MiG-17 monument because it would put them within reach of this country road, but it could also open the gate towards a flanking maneuver and perhaps even encirclement of Ivanivsky. As you can imagine, if the Russians hold this sector here and this one as well, the fortress here will effectively be encircled. And no matter how well fortified it is, once these guys run out of ammo, it's over. Now, because Wagner is taking the bulk of Russian casualties around Bakhmut, Prigozhin held a handful of dog tags of the KA Wagner fighters and proposed that Russian businessmen should pick a dog tag at random and then take care of the family of the fallen fighter. That's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of my analysis. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support my work, make sure to check out my Patreon and PayPal. The links are in the description below.